Chairman of UPF, President uh, Thomas Walsh, Madam Moon, Your Majesties, Excellencies, Presidents, Prime Ministers, Speakers of Parliament, religious leaders, women leaders, business leaders who have gathered here in Seoul as delegates to the UPF Summit. My friends, ladies and gentlemen, we have come from many parts of the world in this global gathering here in Seoul to honor the dramatic achievements and expansion of this organization which is only 12 or 13 years old, created by Reverend Moon and Madame Moon in the year 2005. I remember I attended the conference in New York which gave birth to the UPF. And I must say that UPF today, Chairman Young and Dr. Walsh, is, is like a smaller version of the United Nations. And even perhaps more meaningful than the United Nations, although Under Secretary General Chowdhury is here, because here you have representatives of the great religions, which you don't have in the United Nations. You have leaders here of Christianity and the Roman Catholic Church. You have leaders of Islam, leaders of Confucianism, leaders of Taoism, leaders of Judaism, and even leaders of the two factions of Islam, the Sunnis and the Shiites. Yet, as I mentioned this, my wife Gina was telling me, by God, the human race, our race, today is hopelessly divided. See the tragedy and chaos at Gaza, between Palestinians and Israelis the tragedy and violence and chaos in Syria, the tragedy, the violence and the chaos in Iraq, in the Sudan. And the conflict between Sunnis and Shiites, even in Egypt, in Pakistan, in Afghanistan, in South Asia and Central Asia and Southeast Asia from my region. Thank God that in the Philippines, we were able to finally, after 40 years, able to bring about a few months ago this historic peace between Muslims and Christians in the South. One of the most successful peacemaking efforts in Asia. And as I look at my friend, Prime Minister Sanana Guzmao, one of the founding fathers of East Timur. He has brought peace between Indonesia and East Timur in spite of the massacre of hundreds and hundreds of East Timuris as they fought their battle of independence. But he has succeeded in bringing peace and reconciliation between Timur and Indonesia. I believe that UPF is one great model among the civil society organizations, among the not, not non-government organizations engaged in track to diplomacy, while governments and foreign ministries are engaged in track one diplomacy, there's a need for UPF 
and the other civil society organizations around the world to assist, to augment, to complement the efforts of the United Nations system to try to bridge this gap, this increasing division in the human race, in the human family. We can almost detect again the beginnings of a Cold War between Russia and Europe and America. You can see again the beginnings of conflict that could enlarge in the East China Sea and in the South China Sea, between Vietnam and the Philippines and China and Malaysia and Taiwan. As we discuss the maritime problems in the two China Seas, in the East China Sea and the South China Sea. One of the great solutions envisioned by Reverend Moon and which I had the privilege to launch in the United Nations when I spoke before the Security Council and the General Assembly was the creation of an interfaith council in the United Nations system. In the United Nations today you have the Trusteeship Council, the Security Council, the General Assembly. But why still have a Trusteeship Council? There are no more trust territories in the world. The trust territories have already become independent. They have already achieved their independence, their freedom. One of the last is East Timor. So perhaps there is need to restructure the Trusteeship Council and call it the Interfaith Council to bring together the great religions of the world into the United Nations network so that the religious leaders of the world can complement the efforts of governments, of parliaments, of political parties in the solution and of peace and reconciliation and development in Latin America, in Africa, in Europe, in Asia, and around the world. I hope Dr. Walsh, Chairman Young, that as we discuss the various problems of the world, all of us can go home after the end of this summit and speak to our foreign ministries, to our parliaments, and to our governments. Let us revive our struggle, the launching of the Global Interfaith Council in the United Nations. Not to compete, but to complement, to assist, to augment the efforts of governments and foreign ministries to solve the conflict problems around the world. <laughs> this was Father Moon's dream. And since 1993, 1994, I spoke at the UN system almost every year to see how we can bring this about. And we discussed this with President Bush and Condoleezza Rice and the uh, General Colin Powell and Ambassador Negroponte at the United Nations. Perhaps Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, Sir Thomas Walsh, we can make a new appeal to him, mobilizing the great leaders who are here, presidents and prime ministers, incumbents who are here, presidents and former prime ministers who are here, leaders of parliament, religious leaders, business leaders who are here. Let's send them a new petition to wake them up. Today there is need to put together this interfaith council at the UN because the greatest problems and challenges and tragedies and conflicts in the world today are these interreligious conflicts. 
the violence in Syria, the violence in Iraq, the violence in the Gaza, the violence in Afghanistan and in Pakistan, the violence in West Africa, the violence in our part of the world, Southeast Asia. UPF has a distinct role to play. And the first order of business, I must say, Dr. Walsh, Chairman Young, and you, all you excellencies who are here today who wield influence and power in your governments, in your societies, in your nations, in your countries, let us invite all our foreign ministers to lunch when you reach home and revive the general resolution that we pressed in the United Nations, which are approved by 60 nations, 60 governments, to recreate and reignite the enthusiasm when we launch this great movement. So that finally, I see Dr. Taj, the Secretary General of the World Organization for Peace in the United Nations, and Dr. Chowdhury, let us use our little influence, but when combined, it will be like a flood to see how, as Father Moon saw it, this great revival of bringing the great religions of the world, because as the German philosopher said, there can be no peace among nations unless there is peace among the religions. And perhaps if we agree that it is worth our while, should we, Dr. Walsh, craft a resolution that we can all sign before we leave so that our delegations at the United Nations can present to the Secretary General of the UN for the adoption of an interfaith council at the UN to complement and augment the efforts of governments and foreign ministries around the world. My friends, ladies and gentlemen, this is my humble message. I just remember, and let me mention it just for a minute, that Reverend Moon, who was from North Korea, and Madam Moon, who was from North Korea, they built an automobile factory in North Korea, and then they donated it to the North Korean government. They built a hotel in North Korea, and they donated it to the North Korean government. And Reverend Moon, who was a football enthusiast, helped develop the football movement in North Korea. And so, through inter-trade, through his relatives who are still in the north, through his friends, and by example, he has tried to reach out to the North Korean regime. It's difficult, but someday I can see that there can be a final reconciliation and a final unification in the Korean Peninsula. My wife, Gina, who always looks at the television series, which is very popular around the world. I don't know whether you're familiar with, what is his name? Jumong. Jumong is the most popular Korean television star today in Korea, in Asia, and around the world. And Jumong, was a South Korean king. And he tried to unite the three kingdoms of South Korea. And you know, I cannot sleep at night because my wife tunes in to this television series <laughs> morning, noon, and night. <laughs> and it's very popular. And she and I will address the Korean Parliament on Tuesday or Monday, and the one who will host 
this meeting in Parliament is the mother of Jumong, who is a good friend of the President Park of Korea. So, Dr. Walsh, let's start from there to see how we can, UPF can contribute to the unification of the Korean Peninsula using unconventional means, means that have not been tried before as we try to bring peace among governments, among peoples, among nations, and bring peace in the hearts of men. Thank you, and good evening.